For the body, we're starting uh, with the primer, again with white, and again I'm using Citadel Rathbone. And um, just apply it all over, and obviously let it dry. We'll be doing the face later on, and I'll actually be showing you two methods how you can get the darker skin tones. In the part related to the body, you'll be seeing getting them using some uh, uh, using the standard colors, so like blue and uh, red and yellow. And there are the ones that you're seeing on the screen. I'm using airbrush colors, just in case you want to, to use an airbrush for them. They work just fine with the brush as well. You're getting the proportions and the whole idea with the darkened skin tones is to go a little bit more red. So anytime you have a shadow, just keep in mind that it tends to be cool tone. In this case, it will lean towards uh, purple, so red purple. And uh, never do the shadows like orange. It will look very strange and very makeup-like. That's why the first layer of color, we're just doing this uh, dark maroon. And you can use this mix and then just add more white and more yellow in case you want to lighten the skin tones. Obviously, not all dark skin tones are equal, so it'll be a difference if you're painting somebody like, uh, like Blade, like Wesley Snipes, versus if you're painting somebody like Zoe, which is actually quite, uh, quite light in skin uh, in skin color. That's why for her particularly to that initial mix I'll be adding some more white and yellow. Bear in mind that from this moment on when you want to lighten it or if you're going to do any highlights stop it with the reds you're just gonna do white and yellow. That will give enough contrast and enough realism for this uh, skin tone. It looks dark and it's okay to be dark just because it's the base and the shade color. We'll be going over with an airbrush later on with the highlight shade, which in order to keep it in the same family and not to, ha uh, to have that much contrast, uh, we'll be adding to the exactly the same color, as I mentioned before, some white and some red. So you're just uh, adding them to get them as light uh, or as dark as you want. Again, you need to look at the actor and how close they are. If, as I already did the head, you've seen me comparing the skin tone I have obtained with the one that I already painted on the head, just to have a match between the body and the head. And uh, because I put it in the airbrush, I'm actually going in with a little bit of water and a little bit of thinner for the airbrush to make it uh, softer. I like to go in thin layers even with the airbrush. These are airbrush colors so you can uh, in theory go in with uh, full pigment. And um, as I mentioned before, because they are airbrush color, pay attention to shake them very well before you use them. They tend to settle. So anytime you're using it, just uh, shake it. For the airbrush, apply it like you would apply any form of highlight. So going from the top down, thinking where the light would hit, go uh, in the downward mo motion. And try to hit the high points. So for example, on the leg, you, legs, you will hit the muscles, you will hit the knees. On the arms, you will hit the elbows, the knuckles, the top of the shoulders. Anywhere there's a high point in the sculpture, you want it uh, defined with a highlight color. And that's pretty much it. I mean, just uh, apply it all over and let it dry. Moving on to the clothes. Uh, because you used an airbrush and you didn't do any masking, I have a lot of color from the skin tone on the dress. That's why in order to get uh, a proper col color afterwards, I'm putting the white back in. So anywhere you, where you have some uh, color spill off, just put uh, the same base coat, uh, in this case the Citadel Redbone. Just put it, uh, put it on the dress and color it all over.
let it dry and up next we'll be doing the color in the panties i'm just using black templar again which is a dark gray and it's a contrast just because uh, it can settle into any details there, are, there is some sculpt actually on the color uh, as you have seen if you're doing mistakes uh, you can uh, quickly wipe it off so keep the paper towels and it at any point handy and with a fine brush, it's a uh, artificial uh, extra small brush from Citadel. Pay attention to the margins, pay attention to the borders. Again, wipe it off if you made a mistake. And um, just paint it all over and obviously let it dry. Yeah, so after it dries, um, I actually decided in the end to do the dress with an airbrush because as you have seen, I tried to apply it with a brush just to be lazy and uh, skip this masking part, but it didn't go too well, it was very patchy. So with painter's tape, uh, you want to apply it all over the skin and because I have these small details, and I wanted to show the liquid mask, which is an excellent product. Just apply it, uh, apply it all over. Pay attention when you're using a liquid mask, not use a brush. It will destroy any brushes you have. So either you're using a very old uh, damaged brush, but a toothpick, as you can see, works, works amazing. Uh, the only thing with it is just to shake it before you use it and make sure you apply it all over. You can apply multiple layers in case it, uh, it didn't cover. And uh, that's pretty much it. For the dress, her dress is uh, in the movie something like a dark red, a burgundy, which I didn't have as a color in my collection. That's why I'll be mixing my own. Burgundy is uh, more or less a purple and a red. So if you have a violet or purple color, you can use that one directly. And again, because I didn't, I'm creating first a purple, which is uh, blue, red and white. And then uh, I'm adding more red to get the burgundy. I'm applying it all over the dress and then I'm adding more white to the mix and doing some highlights just on the high points on the, of the dress where the skin is either pushing against the fabric or where you have folds or you have the margins of the dress, apply the highlight color. It turned out actually very, um, uh, very let's say shiny, that's why I'm going with a matte varnish at the very end and let, letting it dry. In order to remove uh, the liquid mask and the tape, you'll see it's quite easy. It's basically just peels off. And it has the advantage of not damaging the paint underneath. If there's any liquid mask uh, left, just uh, easily scrape it off either with a toothpick or with your nails. For the head sculpt, we'll be going through the same process uh, as pretty much all the time. Starting with the white primer, I'm uh, still using the Citadel Rathbone and apply it all over including the, um, the hair because uh, later on we're gonna come with uh, again a contrast paint for the hair and you want the highlights to show through the contrast paint. Apply it all over and obviously let it all dry. For the face, we're going to be using um, this Skin Tones paint set by Army Painters. So it's an alternative to mixing your own colors from the basics. We're still going to be mixing colors. You can't uh, use them straight out of the box. But if you have this set, you can just uh, use it directly. You have the, uh, the proportions on the screen. So for the first layer, for the first base, it's going to be the same as for the body. It's going to be something darker and something red tone. So we're going with this maroon. And um, 
obviously depending on your character you can go as dark and as light you're just gonna add this time around more of the other skin if you are planning for uh, somebody with a lighter skin tone you know like uh, an indian or uh, something like this apply it all over and let it dry and then we're gonna do two rounds of uh, dry brushing or you can also do air brushing with lighter colors in between because we need to let the layers dry i like to apply the main um, chunk of the hair color the first base and the hair let it dry well and for let's say a longer period of time until they really dry to the touch the dry brush because it's dry brush it's gonna dry faster and also when you finesse the hairline it's gonna go uh, it's gonna dry a little bit faster for the first uh, layer of the of the dry brush we're actually just mixing now the tiger skin with um, with the dorado skin and uh, a first time around we're just gonna be using two parts of the lighter color versus one part of the darker color If you are dry brushing it or if you are air brushing the process is the same, trying to go from top to top to bottom. Try not to go underneath the eyebrows or in any recesses, just to give a little bit of uh, shading in the face. Let it dry. And uh, then we're going to move to the uh, last uh, highlight phase. This time around we're going to mix one part of the dark color with four parts of the lighter color. And you want to apply this lighter than the rest, so don't, uh, let's say, insist so much. You want just the high points to be touched by this color. I'm next moving on to the hairline with a fine brush. I'm using the Citadel Artificial, Artificial Excess brush. So you want the extra small because it's very precise. Just do the hairline in little, uh, little lines, little strokes. The most important thing is not to do a block or a very defined uh, hairline in order for it to look a little bit more realistic. So as you can see in the video, just do little, little strokes. Moving on to the pastels now, we're going to start with brown and a little bit of uh, purple to contour the face. The process is the same all throughout the perimeter of the face in small circular motions, uh, apply this pastel and you want to blend it slowly inwards. When you get to the temple and underneath the cheekbone, you want to do something like a C shape and uh, just keep close to the hairline and keep close to the margins of the face and wherever you have a recess apply this color like underneath the eyebrow 
underneath the eye go lightly because uh, she's a woman and in theory she has makeup so you don't want to give her eye bags or dark eyes just focus on contouring the cheekbones and the side of the face a little bit underneath uh, the face Now, in order to give some more life uh, to the face, we're going to start applying the reds and the oranges. With red, you want to go lightly around the eye to give that effect of very soft skin, a very translucent skin. Obviously, around the cheekbones, go lightly on the nose and uh, go lightly everywhere else. Don't forget the earlobes because they tend to be red as well. Because she has a darker complexion, you can uh, mix uh, a dark orange with the red for the colors in the cheekbones. And with a fluffier brush, just apply an orange primarily across the forehead because that tends to be the more yellowish part of the face. Moving on to the eyes, uh, the process is starting with black you want to define the upper lash line in this case because she has a little bit of an uh, eyeliner already sculpted you just follow what uh, the sculpt has and fill all that thing with uh, with black For the white of the eye, uh, as always, don't do it white, don't do it off-white, just do it white and blue and black. Now, because she has very dark eyes, we're going to draw in the iris with black and it will be the iris and the pupil. We're actually not doing uh, different colors. That's it pretty much for the eyes. We're going to give her now a little bit of makeup using watercolor pencils. Again, just because they're so easy to use and if you mess up something, you can just clean them with a damp brush. Using a brown, we're going to give her some makeup from, for the lower lash line. So, uh, water your brush, uh, go into the pencil and then where the lower lash line is, just draw a little bit of of brown and smudge it around
You want to add the red as well to the waterline. That's very difficult to film uh, because you really need to get up close. That's why this part is heavily edited. Using black, you will draw the eyelashes and the eyebrows. There is, by the way, a separate uh, Eye, eye tutorial and you'll be able to see it uh, in the description box and uh, the process is filmed uh, is recorded a little bit clear so you'll be able to see the steps uh, one by one and uh, what now whatever color you want just add it to to her lips And for the earrings, I'm just going with a red. The model actually has longer earrings. Mine just broke during the washing process. So uh, I would suggest when you wash her head, just keep it, uh, keep it on the plate. Don't let it uh, wiggle around in the washing station. At the very end, you want to apply some gloss varnish. I'm using uh, the Technical Art Coat from Citadel to the eyes and in this case to the lips as well. And I put a little bit on the earrings, just for variation. Now, using the pastels, you want to apply the oranges and the reds to the legs and the arms as well. So brush all over with, uh, with a light orange first to give that tan effect. And uh, then with the same uh, better br brush that we have applied the reds, apply them all throughout. For the rest of the accessories, we're just going to keep it simple. So the gun and the boots, you can do it with Black Templar, which is a contrast paint, just because it will settle in all the fine details. And uh, just brush it all over, let it dry, and then for the boots, I actually went in with a silver and did the zipper as well.
for the base, it's just prime it all over with a black. I'm using a spray paint, uh, again from Citadel, it's a black uh, chaos. And then using a fluffy brush and some silver, dry brush it all over. It's a simple process and it just looks nice. And uh, you'll get that metallic effect. Coloring the hair bun obviously with the same color that you have used for the um, for the rest of the hair. And also paint with a little bit of silver her badge that she has on her chest. And that's it. This is the finished model after assembly. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, happy printing, happy painting. Thank you everybody for watching.